not just losing in that fashion over the weekend was brutal, but the news coming in Friday, Hunter Green, 15-day IL, right elbow inflammation. That's bad. That's not a good sign. Uh, we did get a little bit of information that might point towards something a bit better than awful. However, skepticism is always the key when we're hearing anything as far as like health news goes from the organization. But yeah, uh, Hunter Green going on the IL is awful. Yeah, you can't trust anything they say anymore, especially with CES and then throwing Lodolo out there with that blister. And then he has not looked the same since then. Mm-mm. And whatever's going on with Matt McClain, at this point, getting a second look at that rib cage when he'd already messed up his shoulder, you can't. He might really. have a foot injury. I have no <laughs> idea. They might not know what a shoulder is. I'm we, very concerned. And Brandon Williamson, who knows? We have no idea. So them giving telling us anything, they can look at you and go, you know, the sky actually green and you'll be like yeah I, I guess i have to believe you yeah when you look at it like that that's probably correct <laughs> yeah sure yeah yeah totally yeah i'm in no it's not that big of a deal okay nick crawl said uh what he said today is quote promising quote we had a doctor see him had an mri it is not as bad as we thought he's going to get checked out again a second opinion and we're working through that right now at this point it's minimal he's going to miss some time obviously <laughs> best case scenario is it's an injury to his elbow and we just want to be precautious on that but overall it's the overall it's the best case scenario, and hopefully he'll miss a minimal amount of time, and he'll be back soon. He's going to get a second opinion because CES needed to get a second opinion. Yeah, because the first opinion didn't find the broken hand in his hand. <laughs> in his hand. When they looked at it, they were like, ah, you're fine. He's like, I'm going to go check that out real quick. And then they go, and they put the they check, and they go, yeah, dude, that's fucked. Shut it down. Mm -hmm. And they lollygagged and waited too long. Yeah, they did. So that cost him bigly. Bigly. Huge. And then Brandon Williamson, like we said, we just don't know. We we He might be supposedly starting up soon. Gotten very minimal, minimal information on him. And and so you're just looking back and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I, I totally believe him. I just, you know, I just, I just, there's my gut feeling says Nick Crawl and David Bell really know how to handle the health of this team. Yeah, I've seen this dog and pony show before. So, yeah, skepticism is the key uh, for this. But I really do hope that things are going to go well for him. And maybe it's just like maybe some elbow soreness, elbow fatigue. Who knows? Uh, but, yeah, this is awful to see, especially with how he's been pitching as of late, a legitimate Cy Young candidate season. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's retroactive and he only misses two starts. That's best case scenario. Yeah. But, and if he missing two starts, does that take him out of the Cy Young conversation? No. If he comes back in and is just lights out and picks up where he left off and maybe would have to have Sale kind of drop off a bit. Sure. So I think he would be in the conversation if he just misses two starts, comes back, and I'm not sure how many more uh, outings that would give him. But if he can come in and still be dominant, especially after going on the IL like that, that would be a great conversation, yeah. you know, for him to have, uh, you know, that argument. But seeing as how it's going to be reflective on where the Reds are at, too. Sure. It is. And, like, there's the possibility that they go, just shut it down, bring up some more kids, that hurl it. Because it's, it'll be, it'll be, by the time that they have him truly evaluated to where he'll be, it'll be the beginning of September. Yeah. So at that point, then you're like, well, you we got some of these kids pitching for the bats. Bring them up. Bring up Rhett Louder. You're not starting the clock if you're bringing them up in September. Yeah, depending on the... Way. Mm -hmm. Think De about it that way. True. Yeah, depending on the severity and where where the Reds are at in the wild card hunt, that will determine whether or not he's going to come back or be shut down. Yeah, because if he comes back and does what he did uh, while puking, mind you, seven innings pitch, one earned run, four hits, one walk, 8K, 16 whiffs, and 11 of those on his fastball. Yeah, he's feeling confident. He's knowing how to pace himself in games. He is just being the ace that we've wanted him to be. Yeah, the command, the fastball command. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way he peppers the top of the zone, and you look at his fastball, living low, living on the edges, and living high. That confidence to go in on hitters, and if he's missing, it's not leaking over the middle of the plate. It's bearing further in. So the times when he is missing, he's having a productive miss. Ex yes, exactly, dude. 
Exactly. And so it's a shame to see him go down like this because he also threw one of his curveballs. Yeah, he buddy. He threw that back in the mix. Look at it. 10 splitters, 32 sliders, 63 fastballs, 106 pitches. You just, you just are so bummed because he did turn that corner. And, and here's worst case scenario, okay? Worst case scenario is the inflammation goes down and then they look and they're like, that's a UCL sprain. Mm-hmm. That is the absolute worst case scenario. Because that means Tommy John again. Yeah, and he's already had the one, which was 2019, something mm-hmm. like that. So, I mean, it's not uncommon for pitchers to have two Tommy Johns now. However, surgery is still surgery. Yeah, dude, it's still an elbow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm not sure how much easier it is to recover after two Tommy John surgeries, but mm-hmm. we are talking worst case scenario right now. Yeah, I can tell you how it is to recover after eating two Jimmy John sandwiches. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot. You have to you have to caffeinate. You really just have to maybe take a little take a little digestive, shoot it down, really help push everything through, wait it out. Mm-hmm. About an hour before you do anything else. But again, he's an athlete, so please pace yourself. Pace yourself. So this is what you're supposed to do after two after two Jimmy Johns, two Tommy Johns. No clue. I got no idea. <laughs> none, none whatsoever. But you know, I'll I'll try and go for another two two Jimmy John J, and I'll I'll film and let you know how it goes. Yeah, exactly, Hunter. <laughs> if this is a Tommy John surgery, if you go through it, Billy will do uh, four Jimmy Johns. <laughs> He will inspire you. Now, if four, if I do four Jimmy Johns, that means they're going to be four unwitches. Yeah, they will have to be. They're, that's easier to take down. Yeah, and after three, it's very unlikely to get past the fourth <laughs> unless you do the unwitch. <laughs> yeah, and then you're actually in. You're actually inviting more, like you know, vitamins into your body, mm-hmm. some good, powerful greens along with the protein from the meat. So, yeah, a g- great way to end is with the unwitch. Mm-hmm. And the bread won't back you up that much. No, it's not that bad. It's yeah. really not that bad. And especially if you get a, a, a little a little shot of Aperol, maybe. Like oh, an, that's nice. Uh, a, an Underberg, if you will. Oh, okay. Go get a little Underberg, and that just helps push everything right along. So... When you get your your your, sec, your second Jimmy John's again, we're talking about Tommy John surgery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 